I'm Scott Allen Miller. It's the 20th of October, 2022. This is my vlog of daily life in Leon, Nicaragua. And today I have a request. By the way, it's Thursday. The request is one of my viewers is really interested in seeing the area around La Iglesia Recolección, which is in the north side of El Centro, really close to the Basilica, about two blocks north and one block east of the backside of the Basilica. So that's where we are. We're just around the corner from the church and the hotel of the same name. And we're going to be doing a walk around the block tonight. And uh, we're going to start with right here is a Veridades. This is actually like a mini mall here in the city. It is full of different vendors uh, selling clothes and stuff, but it's a pretty nice and large place. So I just wanted to show that to give kind of a reference as to where we are. In just a second, I'm going to spin the camera around and we're going to walk forward. You don't want to see me because we're actually going to show some of town. Overall today, mostly a pretty slow and chill day. Lots of work. Um, we're working on details about trying to find a house still searching going on. And so we're going to just spend some time seeing the city. I haven't done a walk around Leon in a couple days, a week or two, actually, probably. We have a few stores here. So we're heading east, by the way. The Basilica would be off to my right, but down a couple of blocks. So we have a Mercado and we have an American clothing shop. And this one with the person sweeping, I do not know. It's a cafe without a name. And those exist all over the city. And it's really weird because I have no idea how people know where they are to go there uh, and what they would get. Like, what drives you to go in? It looks very nice, but do you just get a coffee? Is it a bar? Do they have food? I don't know. No one knows. And people say, well, locals know. They really don't. You ask locals and they're like, we have no idea. It is a weird, weird system. So right here, we're looking at the parking for and then the actual Hotel Recolección. This is a large, beautiful hotel. I don't know anything about it. I've never been inside. They actually have a large restaurant down on the bottom corner that we're going to go by. And it looks really nice. I want to go there. Uh, it's on my list of places to try. And it has an interesting vibe that actually looks a lot like something out of the U.S. And the yellow building you can see off to the right is the Iglesia Recolección coming in to view. This is one of the really interesting uh, architectural structures in the city. And across the street here, you can see the hotel that we are coming by. It's a very large hotel. There are not many hotels of this size in the city. Off to the right here. So Inesur is a government department, Banpro, these are large bank offices. And if we look down to the right, before we actually go past the church, down this street on the right, you can see the blue Tropic S building, the yellow building down there. That's Gallo Mas Gallo. Uh, down there is La Union. This is a big, big shopping district just north of the Basilica. This is the Iglesia Recolección. is a really beautiful and identifiable church downtown. We're going to head over there and get some video of it up close, and then we're going to do the block around, but also we're going to be able to turn around and see the hotel from there as soon as I check where this bus is going. We are good. All right, we can see the church here. This is First Avenida Primero, Primera Avenida Noreste. It's a fantastic structure. And then we have the school home there that goes with the church. And then this is the hotel. There's actually a service going on at the church, so I don't want to be too loud, which is fine because I'm always blowing out the mic anyway. And as we look down this way, past these wires, you can kind of see the steeples of the Basilica beyond the buildings there. And this near building just past Inneser has the most beautiful blue and white work out front. All right, we're gonna head around the block. Show you a little, you can see a little bit more of the parking of the hotel. You can see you can drive through from the other side. And we're heading around the block. This is a pretty popular area. Lots of shops here. This is a Muebles. This is a furniture store over there. And a place for rent if anyone's looking. The very nice area. Lots going on, but it's right in the center of the city. It's quite safe. This place is beautiful, not available, but very attractive. And of course, a banner for Subway. 
Oh, another place for sale right here. I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing. My uh, stuff is turned off uh, right here. I don't know if that is a house or a business. Obviously you can use things for anything here. Very flexible. On the right, we're still coming ar across the school of Recolexion because there's most of the churches here do have schools associated with them. So this place is Raspados de Mi Pueblo. They're relatively well-known Raspados are an ice cream replacement that is popular in Nicaragua. It's shaved ice with uh, condensed, sweetened condensed milk and marmalade or jelly or jam or whatever. Uh, quite popular is like tamarind or pineapple jelly. And so it's sweet and the uh, condensed milk gives you, uh, I'll point out, this is Simon right here. This is a furniture and home goods store. Uh, one of the bigger ones in the country big enough that they advertise on TV and stuff. And now we're coming east again on the north side of the block. So the uh, so the Raspados are quite popular. They do them on the beach. A lot of people come around. That's one of the few places that actually has a store for them. So if you're in that mood for a Raspado, you just head to Mi Pueblo and uh, supposedly they have really good ones. I am not a big fan of Raspados. Being an American, I like my ice cream and I don't like ice cream alternatives very much. And uh, it just doesn't do it for me. But here it is quite popular. Uh, they're a little bit lower cost, much easier to keep because you mix the ingredients when people request it, you don't have it pre-mixed, and so they last pretty well. Uh, this is just a beautiful home right here. This is a Catholic center, but it's in an old home, and they did this really neat thing where they converted the garage into a pharmacy. And then the rest of it is like a clinic or something, but it's, it's a really neat use of the building. And then here, I actually don't know what this is. I think it might be a clinic. Really beautiful building in the back that you can't really see because of the trees. And this could be a house, it could be a religious building. I do not know. Yes, this is a hospital here, which really not likely an actual hospital, but more of a clinic. I'm gonna turn around. So this is, this is more of the school over here and still continuing around here. So basically the entire block on that side is part of the church and or the church school. This definitely gives the impression that once upon a time, there was a restaurant here, they had decorations, people could sit out here, but it may not be. It's hard to say, but it would be a perfect spot for a restaurant. And there was a restaurant with the name Nachos at one point. And uh, I don't know what we have here, but it's really cute, really cute. All right, this is on the right, one of the Super Expresses that I never know where it is. It's set back and has such a weird style. So most Super Expresses fit into the neighborhoods. This one does not. It almost looks like it's built out of a mobile home and set back on an empty lot. It is so weird with the, it's a, what looks like wainscoting uh, <laughs> around it. it is. It's weird, weird, and it has like parking. Like it does not fit in the city at all, but it does keep part of the original facade. But it's just, I don't know. I've never actually been in this one. There's lots of Super Expresses around the city. So I don't come up this far looking for one, but it's weird. <laughs> There's just no getting around it. This is one of the chicken buses. I'm gonna see where it's better to get by. Yep, over here. All right, we are at the northeast corner of the block of Recolexion. I'm going to show the street a little bit. You can see another one of the churches up there off the top of my head. I am not sure which church that is, so sorry, I can't tell you. You can probably look it up later. We have a clothing store here without a name. We are on 3rd, and I believe we are at 2nd. Yes, 3rd Calle and 2nd Avenida Northeast. I'm going to cross over to the other side of the street over here so we get a view back towards Recolexion as soon as this car and tricycle go by. This is a, another clothing store right there that we were walking past, most likely. Lots of clothing stores in this particular area. Oh, 
All right. This is on the kind of southeast corner of the really big, like, I don't want to say fashion district. We're going past a shoe store here on the, on the left. Nothing to see, really. Uh, some more houses on the right, an accessory store on the left, king of shoes on the right. If you were to come to this spot and then head northeast, um, you actually, so I guess we're on the southwest corner. Did I say that correctly? Here's another shoe and clothing store. Lots of sporting goods stores as you come down here. Uh, I think there's some watch vendors on the street up ahead, if I remember correctly, and a bakery we just went by. Um, if you head northeast from here, it is basically many blocks of almost continuous clothing stores. So of course there's mixed in restaurants and other things. It's not solid and you can see there is a smoothie shop here on the right as there's often something like that mixed into a neighborhood. But, but this is kind of the fashion district. If you're looking for clothes, of course, right downtown, there's gonna be some shopping always. And of course, if you head out to the mall, the Paseo Real, there's going to be quite a bit. But if you're looking for the biggest selection and the most interesting shopping, this is very loud, then this area is where it is. Many, many, and sorry to be swinging around a lot, but I want to just give you nearly every corner and most of the sides are all clothing shops, shoe shops, accessory shops, and that kind of thing everywhere. That's the Hotel Real right over there. I don't know what Finlay is. I can't see it from here. Maybe you can see it on the video. Uh, not too many clothing shops, some, but you can see some down there on the left. This side remains clothing, this side less so, but that's a fashion store across the way. Dis Todo Dos. Uh, we often go past the original location. And we're gonna turn and head forward so you can see clothing shops again on the right. And we're heading towards the church. Now this angle heading towards the church is my favorite. It is a beautiful area. Coming from the other side of Recolexion is a little bit too city for me. It's a little bit dusty and plain, but this side has these beautiful trees and really good light. And it's uh, with the kind of fashion district here, you get an awful lot of just a nice area. Now I wanna talk about where we are here because this is an interesting mix of things. On the right, this is the Recolexion community over here. I'm just gonna point out, Avaz is a part of Casa Pellas. So they're like car parts and, and repair stuff for uh, motor vehicles. And then that's the Tigo store there. And we're gonna look down this street a little bit. You can't tell quite as much from where I'm standing, but as we look down this street, this is a uh, partial street that goes through. This is Hostel Row. This is where the largest hostels in the city are, Bigfoot, uh, Via Via, this is where Volcano Day is located, White Devil, where Dominica does her uh, tattoo work, uh, Guada Barranca, the home of the bakery and cafe chain uh, that owns Dehumo. They are all right here. This is the street that they are on. So we're not going to go down there, we're just hopping past, but it's a really important street that doesn't generally mix into this community. It's a little bit weird when you're up here on this street, you're in Recolexion, and when you're down there, you are in Hostel Row, and it is all uh, young kids from out of town, uh, and that's where they party. So that is a one of the really lively party districts, but it is the uh, it is the Extranjero. It is the 20-something European and American party district, as opposed to down with Geckos and Bar 23, which is the Nicaraguan party district, or club district, as I should call it. Another clothing shop here. I'm going to try to get past this car before this one clips me. I should be good. And this gives you a pretty good idea of the block around Recolexion. This is, this is a nice part of town. It's interesting and great for coming shopping, uh, whether it's closed or on the southwest corner, you're going to have a whole bunch of banks and the grocery store and Super Expresses and stuff like that. And here you can see, this is actually not a through street. This is like a parking lot, but it's always mayhem here. I'm gonna sneak between these trucks that don't fit. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a lot of fun. So this is the church we're coming past here. Hopefully you can get a really good view of it. Try to get past this camion. The clock obviously doesn't work. There's no hands on it, but this is just a gorgeous old church. You can see there's a lot of people in there right now at afternoon prayer. That's the top. And here we are back at the hotel. Right, 
give you another shot of the church. So that is our 15 minute walk around Recollection. 15 minutes to do one block, not too bad. A lot of stuff going on there. It is an interesting area. This is a lot of traffic. I am actually recording this tomorrow on Friday at 4.30 in the afternoon. So it's kind of busy out on the street. This is rush hour in Recollection. And turn this well. I hate swinging you around. Some more street vendors. We'll go past so you can see what is going on on the street here. And uh, then that ends. So I'm gonna bring you around there's an ATM over here, I was not aware. And uh, this is more of the, of the Recollection. I do actually wanna bring this around again because I was not aware of this. This is Fundacion Ortiz Gordian. This is the same foundation that owns the museums. The biggest museum in town is part of their group. Now I don't know what they have here, but that is the symbol of the museum. So I don't know if this is like offices or if this is actually future museum space or what. I know they are, are expanding, they're doing well and uh, adding more museum capacity here in Leon. So maybe that is what is going on. And check out the size of the shops behind me. There is shopping mixed all through the city. So that is my Thursday adventure for y'all. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow. I'm gonna try to get the kids on the show tomorrow because tonight after doing all my work and stuff. We did hang out. We watched some Stranger Things, as we like to do. We are on the fourth season. We're actually towards the end of the fourth season, doing really well. Probably got two days left, maybe three, three tops, probably two, to get through the rest of the very last of Stranger Things, and then Luciano will be completely caught up and have seen everything that Liesl and I have seen. Liesl have seen it twice. I will have seen it twice. Dominica is still one season behind us, so at some point we'll have to watch it with her. Um, we wanted to get dinner tonight and last night was the panic uh to order uh pizza at the last second because i got stuck working really late this is this is a really cute shopping area i'm just gonna stick the camera in here real quick so it's like a little mini mall and there's all these little shops around this little courtyard it is so cute this is a great little spot to sneak in i don't know how much visibility they get but it is a cool spot there needs to be more things like this uh and there is a little sign to let you know what's in there but it's still hard to to realize it's there. So many things here are just, you have to know about it. Um, which, when you walk around, you do, but it takes a bit. Like, you really have to live here for a while to kind of build up the idea of all the things that they have. And I was not aware of this. This is a jewelry store, a joyeria, uh, and it's at Bisu de Venus. Um, really nice looking place, nice logo. I had no idea that was here. Put the pharmacy on the corner. Uh, I'm heading past Unan on the north side. So that's the, the university. Uh, so if you want to look it up on a map, we're heading west from Recolección past Unan. And uh, we are here at Tip Top on my right over here. You'll be able to see that in a second. Tip Top, for those who are not paying attention to the show all the time, shame on you. Tip Top is the big national fast food chain. So that is the in the ecosystem, the equivalent of McDonald's, but it is chicken. So fried chicken, so the food is more like KFC, but where it fits in the ecosystem is like McDonald's. And on my left, which I'm gonna show over here, this is Unan's main building. And there's something going on, like a graduation or some kind of ceremony, because there's a lot of people really dressed up as I go by. So we'll get some shots of all the fancy looking students. This is one of the most prominent universities in town here, and this is a university town. Uh, so we didn't want, so at last night we did this panic pizza order and that worked out okay, but we didn't want to just order in food tonight. So tonight I said I would cook. And uh, uh, so at about 8.10, I got the girls ready and we went out to go grocery shopping because the house is just empty, nothing in the house. Now I'm standing on an interesting corner. I'm gonna keep coming back to these stories. I'm sorry I get so interrupted, but the whole walking around thing is hard to stay focused. So this tall building on the right, this is the Science Center, the, the Faculty of Science and Technology for Unan. Uh, I don't know what building this is on the corner. It's, uh, it's got a name, but it, I don't think that is what it does. And then the thing I wanna show over here is this restaurant on the corner, this is Il Capriccio, which quite often we say we're going out to eat at Il Capriccio for Italian, because we want authentic pasta. There's two great Italian restaurants in the area. There's Puesta del Sol on the beach and Il Capriccio here in downtown, right by 
Unan. So, and it's nice, the view from there is of Unan, which is a beautiful building. So it's a pretty nice spot, but almost no one knows where it is. So I try to point that out because it's a little family owned place. He's actually from Italy. His wife is from Guatemala and it's just the two of them working in the restaurant. They only have like maybe six tables. Very quiet place, great location, always wide open, lots of air. They do fresh uh, pasta, they have um, sandwiches, they have pizza. Uh, prices are really good. They have a number of post trays for dessert, uh, cakes and stuff. And then they also do fresh uh, frozen yogurt with fresh fruit. So you actually tell them what fruit to mix in, they mix it in and make the frozen yogurt for you right there. So we really like going there, partially because it's affordable, partially because it's not that far of a walk and uh, the food is excellent and uh, the girls like to order uh, food for us to bring back from there pretty regularly. Uh, so we went to the grocery store, did a lot of shopping. When Lisa and Luciana both go with me, we kind of make an event of going grocery shopping, which is funny. As a kid, I used to go to the grocery store with my mom like every week, and it was very much like whatever, just follow her around. And it was, it was kind of fun because I'd hang out with my mom, and we would, um, you know, I would get to pick things out and try different foods, and it was always looking for something, but it was a tiny grocery store. I mean, it's... It, honestly, it must be about the same size. My childhood grocery store, Reinhardt's and Pavilion. Okay, future Scott here doing an emergency cut in because I was doing editing in the future and came across some really interesting stuff. And I just have to share this on the video because this was really awesome for me and not at all what I was expecting when I was editing this video today. So at this point, I'm talking about my childhood grocery store, Reinhardt's in Pavilion, New York, where I used to go with my mother. And it's this really important very large set of memories for me because this is something I always did as a kid. Every week I would go to the grocery store with my mother. I knew Reinhardt's inside and out. I knew every aisle, every person. I knew Bob Reinhardt who owned the place. I knew the girls who worked at the cashiers. I knew most of the people who would stop in to go shopping. That's where I knew my bank clerk and everyone else. Like this was the center of the community because it was the only grocery store in the area. You had to go on to Batavia to get to something else. So growing up, this is where we did almost all of our grocery shopping unless it was a special trip. Now, as I was saying elsewhere in the video, this was a lot like going to a super mini today. It was such a small place. It was just Mr. Reinhardt who worked there, who was very old and to the best of my memory. Uh, and I never would have thought twice about the place. And sadly, the store, because it was such an old building and just a tiny little awkward thing, it was torn down at some point to the point where I don't really remember when it was torn down, but it was quite some time ago and it has not been an operating grocery store in decades. But I used to go there in the late 1970s and early 1980s and I spent a lot of time in Pavilion. I went to preschool directly across the street from this grocery store, my childhood library. Not that we often went to the Batavia one because it was bigger, but the Pavilion library was also right across the street next door to my preschool. Uh, the I did not go to high school in Pavilion, even though that was my local district, but I did go to elementary at Pavilion Baptist, which was right down the street from Reinhardt's. Whenever we got pizza, if you notice I was talking about it on the videos or in my blog over the years, Papa Roni's, which used to be Davis's Pizza, is on the corner that was facing uh, Reinhardt's and so Reinhardt's played this enormous role in my childhood memories and activities it was just the center of going out as a child and I have walked to it from my parents house multiple times not that many because it was a pretty long walk it took hours but when I did really long walks when I was young that's one of the places that I would go because I could all and also many times I would bicycle there because it was one of the nearest places you could stop and get a cold drink or a snack because there were not restaurants in the area so going bicycling or walking did not mean you could go to a restaurant it simply meant you could go to a mini mark uh, to, to find some food so while trying to find a photo of Reinhardt's for you guys to so just pop up in the corner, I discovered something really interesting. I could not find a photo um, of Reinhardt's itself. Strangely, I did find an oil painting, so I'll link to that because I don't have the right to include it here, but I'll link to it in the description so you can see because that is what it looked like when I was a kid. The painting takes place during like the 1950s and I'm pretty sure it's painted from a photo. Uh, so it's very photorealistic as far as oil paintings go, but it's pretty accurate of what it looked like when I was really little, which was not that long after the 1950s when that painting took place. But while researching it, I found no mention of this grocery store anywhere, which really surprises me because for our little community, this was 
the hub of activity. How people have not been mentioning it over the years, I have no idea. Somebody should have mentioned it, and I will try to put it into my blog and a few other places so that at least it's searchable on Google from here on out. But what I found really interesting is the one mention of it was from the Buffalo Historic Society and the Buffalo Bike uh, Wings Tour, I'm not sure what it's called, where they go around the, the wing trail in Buffalo because famously Buffalo where I grew up. So I was born in Rochester, New York, but grew up in the Buffalo zone, which is very close. Like the, we were in between the two, but was born in one and grew up just over the line in the other. They're basically a shared metro area. So it's not like two different places really. And growing up in the Buffalo area, chicken wings were always a big thing. And we always knew that they came from the famous Anchor Bar, one of the world's most famous bars there in Buffalo, the home of the chicken wing, right? Well, maybe not. It's really interesting stuff in the history of the chicken wing. And of course, these things are always this way, right? Someone claims to it to, to be the originator of it, and then there's always a backstory. So looking at the backstory here, there's a couple things of interest. One is that chicken wings were a normal food. Sorry for the dog suddenly playing at the uh, floor. Someone let them out while I was recording. The... Uh, chicken wings in Buffalo have been a standard food going back to like the 1850s, and that's just from historical records. When you look at those records, though, they aren't chicken wings as we know them today. They were simply chicken wings that were fried, and that's it, which is not uncommon in many parts of the world, but they were kind of originated as like a thing you could order in Buffalo, apparently in the 1800s. And it's important to remember that while now Buffalo is a very small city that people don't think about very much, in the 1800s, Buffalo was one of the most important cities in all of the United States. So it had a, a very outsized uh, influence on the world during the 1800s. So it's also important to note that living here in Nicaragua, chicken wings are a really big thing. We see them everywhere. Now, I've been a vegetarian for 22 years, so my memory of chicken wings is different than what a lot of people have now, and I'm beginning to realize why from looking at this article. So, 1850s, chicken wings were already a thing on menus in the Buffalo area, but it wasn't until the 1950s or so that suddenly chicken wings started to take off and take on a whole new character. The reason was there was a new recipe of buffalo wing sauce, although it wasn't called that originally, that became associated with chicken wings, and today we simply call it a buffalo sauce and is what the Anchor Bar is famous for, which is essentially Frank's Red, uh, red Hot mixed with uh, uh, butter, right? That's pretty much it. That is the flavor of buffalo sauce. But that was not a popular combination until around that time. We always associate that original recipe with the Anchor Bar, but according to some historical records, that is not where it actually came from. It actually came from a place called the Red and White, which was Reinhardt's grocery store uh, before it was renamed in like the 1940s. So from what I can tell in the record, in the 1940s it was called the Red and White. Around the 1950s it took on the name of Reinhardt's grocery store, or whatever it was, Reinhardt something, and when I was a kid in the 1970s, it looked exactly like it did in the 1950s. And then somewhere in the late 80s or early 90s, I think is when it was torn down. Or at least, I think by the late 80s is when it was shut down as a grocery store. By the 90s, maybe it was torn down. There was a period where it was simply closed. I think it was used as a house for a little while, but it was too small actually to be much of a house either. So it turns out that Bob Reinhardt, and I think I have his name right, uh, Mr. Reinhardt from the grocery store is actually the inventor of the modern chicken wing as we know it today, as we eat it around the world, as is super popular in Managua, uh, is from this little tiny corner market that I went to with my mother as a kid and knew absolutely everyone who worked there. And it also turns out that Chicken wings were only starting to catch on in the 50s and 60s. It wasn't until the late 1970s when I was a little kid that they really started to take off. And in the early 80s is when we had the explosion that brought them to the popular consciousness, which tracks with my memory because when I was a little kid, I don't remember people thinking or talking about chicken wings at all. Like it just wasn't a thing. But sometime during elementary school, it started to be like everyone had chicken wings. And eventually it was like, yeah, the Anchor Bar in Buffalo has invented chicken wings and they're like the hot thing. And we knew it as like an old thing that didn't seem to exist to us until recently. It turns out that I actually grew up in the town where they were invented at the time that they went from no one had heard of them to being massively popular. And by the time I moved to Nicaragua, their popularity is simply exploding in front of me. So as I arrive new places, it seems like they've been there, but 
it's actually a brand new thing that throughout my growing up, it was starting to appear as a food. Similarly, the garbage plate from Rochester, when I was in college and university, it was just starting to get attention. Yes, it had been around, Rochesterians had heard of it, but it was not like something that someone visiting town would know to look for or someone uh, outside of the city would be able to get. After I left college, university, it started expanding and now it's widely available and in bigger and bigger areas and they're starting to make it outside of the Rochester area. So in the next 10 years, I wouldn't be surprised if we started seeing that kind of stuff down here. It's weird seeing foods like that from where they start. But this was crazy interesting to me that this, it's, it's impossible to really convey just how like connected I suddenly feel to chicken wings because there were no other kids who went to Reinhardt's. Like, I'm sure there were, but I never ran into kids there. There were not that many people who went there. We were I walked in the front door. They knew exactly who we were. This was a family place. We knew everyone at Reinhardt's growing up. It's, it's this memory that I feel like I share with almost nobody. And yet now I find out it's this really, really important, influential place. And now I want to figure out what their connection is to Frank's uh, Red Hot because I think the name of the store was Frank's Red and White. For all we know, it's the place that invented Frank's Red Hot. I need to do research on that because that would be absolutely mind-blowing if it was also that. I'm just making that up based on some connections of names, but it would be really interesting. Anyway, I had to jump in and share that really important story of my life. Sorry, I'm sweating. It is so humid here that, and I had to close the windows because of the street noise, so there's no wind moving at all, and I have the heat of the lights and everything, but this was a huge revelation as to parts of my life coming together in things that I witnessed historically. It's really, really interesting. All right, and back to Recolección. For anybody who can remember that, that place has not existed for 30 years, for real. Um, that place, when it's full size, must have been roughly the same size as like the Super Express that we go past here. Like, really, it must be right about the same size. So when I was a kid, that was a supermarket. Like it was a pretty good size selection of food and stuff. Today, we would call that a super mini here or just a mini mart or a corner store or whatever back in the States. Very, very weird how that has changed so much. And all those small, what was big back then now is considered absolutely tiny. And uh, this is Gecko's, one of the places we like to come out and go drinking and partying. They're part of the same group as Bar 23. They're all owned together. There's a bunch of, there's like a chain, there's like, I don't know, four of them. But they're really big. Gecko's, Gekito's, Bar 23, and or 23 Bar. And uh, I think there's at least one other that I can't think of. Um, and so they, they share staff and everything, and they're pretty good. And uh, uh, so we, we spent about an hour, did tons of grocery shopping, looked at, oh, look at these, they're so cute. Uh, and we got about 4,000 cord of groceries, which is rather excessive. The largest I normally get is about 2,800. So this is a lot of groceries. We got everything, cheeses and snacks and yogurts and ice cream and breads, baked goods, you name it. We just, we had to restock butter. We were out of like everything in the house. It was really a problem. So we went crazy getting all of that uh, and then came home and I made dinner. What's funny is the thing that they ended up wanting, we were, our plan was I was gonna make them burgers tonight and we got all the stuff for that. But right before we left the grocery store, they had frozen pizzas, the kind that they get in the States for a dollar. Of course they aren't a dollar here, they're $4. But the girls have really missed them and Dominica always acts like they don't exist. At $4, they're really not that bad, especially because they're probably not a dollar in the States anymore either. They're probably $2, maybe more, right? I don't know, but uh, I'm gonna check on that next time we're back so we have an idea of how much different it is. But it is, uh, it's expensive for here, but it's not expensive in the grand scheme of things. $4 and it keeps them really happy because they really miss those pizzas. That's a big deal. And quite often because we can't find because we can't find food that they like, we end up spending quite a bit of money constantly buying restaurant, from, restaurant food and tons of it they don't eat because they end up not liking a style or they don't make it the way that they think or that it's not consistent because they everything's you know kind of made on the fly here. So things will vary from meal to meal a lot. So you could like a sandwich one day and not like it the next. That's a bit different, difficult for kids who are relatively picky. So having a frozen pizza that they love from back home 
it just makes sense. And Dominica's like, that's crazy, $8 for this cheap frozen pizza. But here's the thing, if I was to go to Valenti's, which Chana likes but Liesl doesn't, I would have to spend at least $8, more likely 10. Yes, the pizza would be technically way better pizza. I mean, seriously, way better pizza. And I'm trying to see what things I'm going past here. This is First Baptist, just in case you're looking, we're in Zaragoza. And we spend $10, we'd have to have it delivered. So that's like $11, because it's a $1 delivery fee. And we'd, we'd tip the driver, probably $2. So it's really $12, right? Maybe more. And Liesl doesn't want to eat it, so I have to make her something else. Now, I'll probably make her something cheap. It'll probably be like another $2. But, so it comes out to like $14, and the kids aren't that happy. For this, $8, and I know they're going to be thrilled. Come on, it's a slam dunk. So that's what I did for dinner, and we have supplies to feed them tomorrow. And a lot of things have been restocked. I'm coming back past the museum. Mu museum? I just mixed things together. Museo, the museum that we saw at the beginning. I need to come here sometime soon and do a museum tour for you guys because I haven't gotten to do that one yet. That should be cool. I also want to check out this Bernhard Designs over here, J. Bernhard Designs. I'm going to spin you. This is a uh, leather goods store, but leather work is a major thing here. And there's a couple leather workers in the country that I want to investigate uh, and maybe get some stuff. Oh, this is nice. They're painting the building. It's actually it was not in bad shape before, but now it's going to be even brighter. Oh, that's pretty cool. And uh, in case you're wondering, on the left here is the convent. So we are coming past the convent. And I'm running. This is Zaragoza on the right. And remember I said Di Toto Dos. This is Di Toto Uno. This is the original location of that fashion clothing store here in Zaragoza. And I'm back. I have La Borio right in front of me. I will be there in just a couple blocks as I had back. That was the day. That is our trip. Thanks for joining me. There's more coming up. We're going to do the retrospective uh, after the little, the little thing we do here. But before we do that, thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. Tell your friends about the show. Post this on social media, please. That's like Facebook, stuff like that. Just share it. Let people know that you have this great show you watch. Or don't admit it's crazy and weird and, and really long-winded. Just share it and hope that they get sucked in and don't notice how long it is. And, uh, uh, ask your questions below, comments, and if you would like to support the channel, you can do so by buying me a coffee. The link is down below. That goes directly to me and makes a huge difference here on the channel. Thank you so much for your support. Let's head off and do the retro. All right, it's time for the October 20th throwback to three years ago, 2019. Tonight was supposed to be a pretty chill night after last night, Liesl and Luchana and I finished playing Nancy Drew Trail, Trail of the Twister. That's a tongue twister if there was one. And uh, we really like that one. So they're in the mood for Nancy Drew and our family game nights. So tonight we continued playing because we had started it at some point in the past. Um, Nancy Drew Alibi in Ashes. Now, this is one that the girls tend to like a bit more and I'm not as thrilled with. I don't like the game mechanics as much. Like the game is good. Right, it's just it's one of those ones where you have to switch characters and it's not the same, you know, just jump in as others. So for me, it was it was not on my favorite list. I know now, three years later, Luchana still mentions this one as possibly her favorite. Uh, and Luchana did her first appearance on the regular vlog three years ago on this particular one because she popped into my office to give me a hug while I was doing the vlog and I managed to grab her and she did uh, an Alibi and Ashes review with me while I was doing that. So that was really special that she jumped on. So that's one of my favorites because it's really, really rare that I can convince the girls to get on the show at all. That is a struggle. You have no idea how hard that is. They're like annoyed by the show and don't like to be on camera. And there's all these things that we like to do and they want to be like, and they've talked about wanting to be YouTubers or, or Twitch streamers and doing gaming and stuff, but you have to be willing to be on camera to do that stuff. And uh, it's, it's always a struggle, which is weird for me because obviously I'm a little bit natural at it. Like no one talked me into doing this kind of stuff. I just kind of got into it. I do want to point out, it is intense sun today while I am doing this. There are some clouds in the sky like over there, but just some. And like, I mean, there's almost always clouds. We never have a cloudless sky, but there is no shade. This is just completely bright sun and it's like burning my head through my hat which never happens so this is this is a lot of sun i'm getting i'm like getting a tan through my clothes today i have an nd filter a pretty i have a 16 stop nd filter on the camera right now and uh, and this is what it looks like um 
The other thing though that happened, so last night we did Trail of the Twister and finished it, and I love that one. I like that one more than Alibi and Ashes. Tonight we did Alibi and Ashes, and then while we were playing, the sirens went off, and we actually had a tornado tonight in Dallas, three years ago, and uh, so it's really apropos that we finished all this video game that taught about tornado safety. Now the girls have been through a tornado before. We had one that came through Carrollton just two blocks away from the house, a little one, um, a year or two, three years ago, sometime when we were living here and they were little, but they remember it and they talk about it. I still remember years and years later running outside and being like, huh, like looking around for it, trying to figure out what was going on and listening for it down the street because we knew it was really, really close. Uh, but this one, was not as close, but it was in Dallas, North Dallas. It was in our general area. It was a huge one, tore through, did all kinds of damage. So that was a, it was a big thing. We had to shelter in place tonight um, and, uh, and be careful because the, the tornadoes really do get dangerous where we used to live in Carrollton. And it's a good reminder, because we just went through Hurricane Julia here, Hurricane Julia, <laughs> here in Leon a couple weeks ago, like two weeks ago, and it was not dangerous at all, right? There's a little bit of flooding, like don't go out in the streets. Even if you went out in the streets, we're not gonna get swept away. I did walk some places where there have been people swept away in really major storms here, mostly very small children and doing really foolish things like going out on the bridges where they're overflowing into the river. And yes, if you go into the river, that's incredibly dangerous. During a, like now it would not be, like with as bright and sunny as it's been and no rain for at least 48 hours, the water level will be, you know, ankle deep and uh, the worst thing is that it's dirty, not that it's, not that it's you know, flowing heavy. Uh, but during a hurricane or, or a really good storm, all the city flows downhill. The river is just down there. Uh, you can kind of see it where the tree line is down there. Um, and then the, the river will come up 15, 20 feet, uh, in which case you're just, it's heavy flow and there's no bottom and you could just get dragged along. So yes, if you went down to the river, got somehow swept into the river, went on a bridge, if you're really foolish, it could be dangerous, but you're not worried about like your roof getting torn off the building. You're worried about roof damage, right? You, you need to replace some pieces. You're worried about leaks and those kinds of things. You're worried about a power outage, but even that is rare. There's not very common that you get a power outage during a hurricane here. Um, People were really surprised by how much we had of an outage last week. So it's nothing like a tornado where we're, we're really, you know, taking shelter and being like, what do we do to stay safe? We've never had anything like that in all the time we've been in Nicaragua and no one has stories of anything like that here. So it's, it is a very different thing. So this is a good reminder of the fact that it wasn't that long ago we lived in Texas and really had to worry about incredibly dangerous hail. We've seen no hail here and really dangerous tornadoes no tornadoes here and uh, at some point we're going to come across i think the three-year retrospective i had a tornado cross the highway in front of me while i was out doing some work one day so there's just there was a lot of that in dallas it really did come up often and nothing like that here heavy rain some good strong winds is about all that we have to worry about now if we're on the beach we could in theory have to worry about a tsunami and that is dramatic uh, but up here in Leon, nothing of that nature whatsoever. So that was our day. Please remember to like, subscribe, share on social media, and uh, leave your comments and questions below, whether it's about Nancy Drew, about the vlog three years ago, Leon today, you name it. Ask and if you'd like to support the show, you can buy me a coffee. I will see all of you from beautiful, sunny, incredibly hot. Wow, you can tell the summer is here. Leon, Nicaragua tomorrow.